I've been shopping around for a replacement for this KCNC 180mm razor rotor ever since it has become so warped that it started to sink to me. I guess that 100kg dude on a bike is just too harsh for these lightweight rotors. Anyway, after a brief shopping around, and of course doing so on AliExpress, because normal people do that, I bought a pair of these beautiful, passively cooled, floating rotors from China. These are branded N. Lee, however you can buy similar rotors, or possibly the identical rotors, branded as Superstar Components or Uberbike Components, at least in Europe, and they are available in three sizes, 160, 180 and 203 millimeters. I'm going to review those. Also, hello there. As you can see, this is a basic model of this rotor, and by basic I mean the smallest one, although I heard that the 40, 140 millimeters actually exist. However, this is the smallest I found, and that's a shame because I like to have 140 on my gravel bike on the back. Anyway, it's a floating design. Uh, it's so uh, steel when it comes to the braking surface. It is obviously aluminum when it comes to the spider. It is bolted with the 6 bolt standard. However, it is uh, compatible with center lock adapters and I'm actually using an adapter on my rear wheel. And of course the killer feature of this rotor are these aluminum fins which are attached to the braking surface which supposedly add cooling to the uh, to the rotor while it's being used. Okay, let's start with a little pornography for all those who really need to weigh their stuff. This rotor weighs about 132 grams, so you can expect them to be about that. At least in the 160 millimeters variant, obviously the larger rotors are going to be heavier. So this is fairly standard weight for a 160 millimeter rotor, so this is not a lightweight design like these things are, because if you don't know, this one is 92 grams for a larger size. Performance wise, this rotor performed admirably. After breaking in, it provided very uniform and uh, predictable braking force. There was a little bit of a variation here and there, so it wasn't like, like uh, you couldn't feel it, you just uh, pressed the lever and uh, the brake started stopping. You could see that these holes here cause the, the entire bike to vibrate a bit. However, most rotors do that, so that's not much of an issue. However, saying that this rotor performed admirably is a little bit of a stretch, at least for me, because I am used to running much bigger rotors, at least on the front of the bike. And that's because I am a heavy guy. So, 160 was a little bit of an experiment, and I have to say that this rotor passed it, but it just proved to me that 160 on the front, at least for me, is not enough. Unless I've been, I would run a, I don't know, maybe a downhill spec brake, but that's going to be hard on a gravel bike. Now, of course, apart from it being a floating design, which is cool and all that, by the way, I think it's just a gimmick, the most important part of this roller, which makes it the uber cool thing, are these cooling fins which supposedly lower the temperature of the of the rotor while braking. Technically speaking this is important because braking of a brake is dependent on the coefficient of friction between the pads and the rotor and that coefficient is dependent on temperature. The higher the temperature the lower the coefficient so the less braking force you actually have. If you exceed the certain critical temperature, the coefficient of friction actually drops to almost zero and you get nothing. Anyway, if you're expecting this rotor to be uh, similar to the Shimano Freezer rotors, you are going to be disappointed. Because uh, Shimano Freezer rotors are actually a sandwich of a thin metal plate uh, of stainless steel, which is uh, glued or otherwise uh, attached to a, a disc of aluminum which uh, fins off are on the inside of the rotor, so it looks similar to this one. And there is another, another stainless steel plate attached to the other side. So essentially, you are using an aluminum core with two uh, stainless steel plates attached to it uh, to provide braking surface. This rotor, however, has these fins attached only to the edges of the uh, braking surface. 
and it means that there is a very little heat transfer between those two parts. Obviously, those radiators do what they're supposed to do, however, this effect is most likely negligible or non-important, really. So, I actually bought these rotors because they look cool and no pun not intended and I am happy with them because they do look cool however you shouldn't expect those things to matter when it comes to performance of the brake now of course is the uh, question would I recommend these rotors well the most straightforward answer is yes I would because they look cool however if you're looking for a performance upgrade and you don't want to use larger rotor for whatever reason you probably shouldn't expect them to perform any better than any other 160 mm rotors on the market. And of course, this is a product of China, which means that you don't really know who made them and what's their quality control. They didn't come from a reputable brand such as Hope or SRAM or Shimano. So you don't know what you're dealing with. Enli isn't really a brand, it's just a name given to a random component from a random place maybe in two or three or five years that may change you don't even know whether this rotor is the same thing that is sold in europe from a brand such as superstar components it just looks the same but are the materials identical anyway i'm going to keep those things because i like them however well i am a little bit of a at odds whether I should recommend these to people or not. It's always the decision you have to make on your own. Well, I think that's about everything I have to say about those things, so thank you for your attention and see you in the next one.